Hello and welcome back to Project 380. In this video, it's time to fill the third hole. So I've asked for your guys' opinion what I should put in that third gauge hole. And I've had a good couple of suggestions, but one really stood out. And that is the CAN checked gauge. This is a multi-function gauge that works by canvas, and you could choose what it displays, and even display multiple functions. But because this works on canvas or controlled area network, you need an ECU which is CAN enabled, so the ECU can talk to the CAN checked gauge. But because I'm not turning my ECU on just yet, in this video, I'm only installing the CAN checked gauge. So first off, we need somewhere to mount this. I'm obviously gonna put it in my JAS performance panel here, but there is always the option of replacing the oil pressure gauge in the standard instrument cluster. But I really didn't fancy taking apart the cluster again. It wasn't exactly a fun experience last time. So I am going to be installing it in the center console. It installs in a standard 52 millimeter hole and it holds in place with this metal bar and two turn knobs. So I'll mount that in a minute once the wiring's done. On the back of the can check gauge, there are three plugs. Plug A, which is four pins, is for the additional turn knob. Plug B is for USB and 12 volt power. And plug C, which is 12 pin, is for your various inputs and outputs. So let's start off with plug B and get power to the can check gauge. As I'm sure you're aware, I've got a nice fused power source up at the center console from my power supply unit down here, which is fused to 10 amp and a nice ground and plate back here. In the can checked box, there is two sets of wires, a USB wire with plug B on the end. But as you can see, two of the ports aren't being used. Those two ports are actually the positive and negative to supply power to the unit. Now I'm not gonna use this USB cable, but luckily in this second bunch of wires, you do have plug B and plug C. All you've got to do is pin the plugs out yourself. In the kit is included a pinout diagram. So plug B, plug C, B6 and B5 are the 12 volt positive and the ground. And in the kit, you have got pre-terminated ends, which you simply push into the back of the plug until they make a nice click. So that's pretty much all I'm installing on plug B, as I'm not using the USB part of it. So I can now extend those wires and attach them to ground and 12 volt positive. With the positive and negative connected behind the center console now, it's time to move on to plug C. Now there are many ways to wire this up. You can actually add six additional sensors to this that will all read out on the gauge. But for me, I'm only gonna be using two of these wires, can high and can low. These are gonna connect up to the can high and can low on the ME221 options port. So looking at the pinout diagram, all I need is C7, which is can high, and C8, which is can low. So I've actually made my own patch lead as these were the color wires I wanted to run. Can high and can low go in these two ports here, but the plug actually sits that way up. So it's the bottom left two. But with that pinned out, I can now run that behind the dash and to the options port of the ECU. Now this big plug on the side is the options port and this of course gives you more options. So we need a plug that goes in there and for the ME221 generation 2 board you're going to have to purchase yourself a 5757 20 pin male connector block which plugs in nicely to the options port. So here's a pin out of the options port and for the can check gauge we're only going to be using pin number 17 and 18. 17 is can low and 18 is can high. I have already made a patch lead for my options port but I'll go over that in more detail in the future. If you are installing this gauge without using the canvas system, the kit does include a load of pre-terminated wires, which you can put into plug C. So you can wire in a few sensors individually, and also included is a few pull-up resistors, if you need to add them to certain sensors. And I don't know whether you can see it on camera, but you are supplied with a few ends to terminate your own wires to put into the plugs, just like I've done. Basically, everything's included to wire this gauge up how you want. Once this is all plugged in and working, you can scroll through the features that this can display with the left and the right button. But if you are installing this in the original dash cluster, you obviously aren't going to be able to touch these buttons. And that is where this turn knob comes into play. This doubles up as those two buttons, but there is a couple of issues I've got with it. For a start, the lead isn't that long at all. And I don't know whether this is an issue just for me, but the actual knob doesn't fit on properly and is pretty loose. 
So I think I'm gonna have to cut down this knob and glue this one on. Now, I really don't need this, but I've got it, so I might as well use it. But I think I wanna install this all the way over there where I've got a blank slot and this lead just isn't gonna reach. Luckily, it's only four wires, so I'm just gonna extend it. That's all extended now, hopefully enough to reach from over there to the center console. And I've installed it in a switch blank. I did cut the button down a little bit and glue the knob on the end. If you are gonna do this, make sure there's still enough room between the knob and the threads, as this button does click inwards. So I'm now gonna install that in the dash and run the wires from over there to the center console. If you are gonna do this, make sure the wires are tucked right out of the way. You don't want them chafing on the steering column and you don't want them in the way of your feet at the pedals. I think that looks really good there. Nice and functionable and easy to reach. So that's all three plugs wired up and ran to the center console. Time to plug it into the can checked gauge. A for the remote, B for the power, and C for the canvas. And then to put it in its home. That is looking pretty good. I think the only thing that would have made this better is if the AEM wideband gauge was a little bit thinner, as that gauge looks a little bit out of place now, as these two are nice and flush fitting, and that one is sticking out. But that is the can check gauge all installed. It's time to turn it on and see whether we've got power to it and whether the knob works. But I don't expect it to do much as the ECU is currently unplugged for safety. Well, it's working, but up the top here flashed a little symbol to say there was no connection, which is right as it's not plugged into the ECU. Let's see whether the control knob is talking to the can check gauge. Well, that's working well, and as you can see, there are lots of options to choose from. And once this is plugged into the ECU, we can program all of this and choose what we want to see on this gauge. Am I really playing Pong on this? I didn't even know this was a feature. If you've got a can check gauge, comment your best score down below. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got an RPM gauge, RPM clutch, intake air temperature and vehicle speed all in one, clutch and intake air temperature in a bar, a digital boost gauge, throttle position and ignition advance, clutch, intake air temperature and throttle position all in a different display, battery voltage, exhaust temperature, fuel pressure, map sensor, voltage and speed. I'm sure these could be changed around. Clutch position and back to RPM. And I'm sure there's many more. So that is can checked gauge all installed on the Mark II Turbo. Only installed for now, not set up. That will come when I'm almost ready to start the car. So if this video helped you install your can check gauge or made you want to buy one, let me know in the comments down below. As per usual, like, comment, share and subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one.